Hello and welcome to our watercolour journey. Today Heinrich is going to paint these beautiful Christmas ornaments. So come and join us and paint with us. We will link the brushes and the paints that he used in the description below. And there's also a link to the drawing in the description below. It is a good idea to use masking fluid and mask out the snowflakes and some patterns that you want on the little ornaments before you start painting. Make sure that the masking fluid is completely dry and don't use a hair dryer because it makes it very difficult to remove. So let it dry naturally. Then he used a number 10 art secret mop to wet the paper thoroughly. Wet all around the globes. Be careful that the water doesn't go into the little globes because you are only going to paint the background now. He's using the Art Secret Mop number two to go close in to all the little nooks and crannies to make sure that the water is right up against this, the little balls. Now Heinrich is using the same mop and he's adding some indigo to the background. Nice strong mix and you can vary the pigment strength to give a little bit of definition and interest to your background. Just a hint about the background. Because the little balls are going to be a dark blue, you want the background right next to them to be light so that you play off the light against the dark. And the same goes for the ball that is going to be red. So make it light so that the ball can stand out nicely. You can add paint or pigment to your background or you can just use the wet mop to diffuse some of the colors and to get into the small spaces right next to the balls. Keep your strokes light. Don't press hard into the paper when you do this. Keep it light and make quick strokes so that the paint can disperse naturally. Don't tilt the paper. You don't want the paint to flow anywhere. And then just keep it flat and let it dry naturally. Remember that you have masking fluid on the paper, so you don't want to use a blow dryer to dry it faster. Remember, blow drying and masking fluid don't go together very well. Okay, so here we have the painting of the globes and he's using a silver black velvet round. You wet each globe before you start painting it and is going to start with a French ultramarine. Add the paint lightly to the wet globe and vary the pigment strength. The reason why you do that is to give light and shadow and more interest to the sides of the globe so that you can have variation. You want to leave a little space so that there's a kind of a sparkle in the globe once the paint is dry. And just as with the background, you want to have contrast. So the one side of the globe is a little bit darker than the other side. Wet the next globe. Uh, 
and again the French Ultramarine. Just dab it in quick light strokes. Don't brush too hard. You don't want to press the paint into the paper. Just dab it in. And the third ball. Wet it nicely up to the edges. And then we are going to use the Perline Red to do this ball. It spreads beautifully. Use your brush to guide the paint into the wet surface. You can let your painting dry now if you want to or you can simply just remove the masking fluid in the snowflakes and in the little leaves by using a rubber cement eraser or plastic eraser, your fingers, a tissue, anything really just to remove all the masking fluid. Be careful not to get the residue into the wet paint, that's why it's best to let it dry. Rub gently so that you don't damage the paper and that's why the rubber eraser is actually quite good to use. Make sure that you've removed all the residue. You don't want to get some rubbing dust into your paints. He used the indigo and the Escoda number no. 6 round to start painting the shadows into the snowflakes.
apparel in red for the cherries. Just dab it in lightly. You are going to layer it, so don't worry if it's too light. You will add some paint to it a little bit later again. And then a premix of sap green and hooker's green that you can use to paint the leaves. You can use perylene green or a little bit of Payne's grey to add some shadow to the leaves. Again, let your painting dry and now we are going to get ready to do the globes. So use your eraser again to remove all the masking fluid from the globes. Make sure that there's nothing left and make sure that there's no residue left on the paper. Now here's the thing, you are going to glaze the globes, so make sure that you wet it again with clean water. It's using a different brush to wet the globe with clean water and you are going to glaze in. In other words, you are going to drop in the paint little by little again to form your next layer. Allow the paint to spread. 
You can use your brush to coax it where you want it to go. Be very gentle so that you don't lift the bottom layer of the paint. Follow the same technique for the other globes. Lightly wet it with a different brush or a clean brush and then add your paint drop by drop and coax it to where you want it to go. Add a little bit more paint to the one side just to give the shadow side a more definition. Sometimes the masking fluid can make very hard lines. When you take it off you can see the hard lines. So you can use your brush to diffuse those lines a little bit. And that's what he did with the bottom globe. The top globe, he kept the stark lines because he wanted to make sure that there's enough definition and enough interest in the top globe. There is using the same paint, the same brush, he just wet it a little bit. So he didn't add more pigment to the brush, he just wet it so that he can use the water to spread the paint and make soft edges. The globe at the bottom is still fairly wet, so he's just adding the next layer to it. Adding some water to make the edges softer. Quick light strokes. Be very, very careful that you do not disturb the layers underneath. So work very gently. When you are done, you can let the painting dry naturally again. And now we are going to use Gwenacridone Gold to paint in the chains. Do make sure that your painting is dry properly, otherwise the gold is going to seep into the little balls and you are going to get quite a messy color mix there. He's using the Kum Memory Point number one brush, which is a really stunning brush. It keeps its point, it holds quite a lot of water and it's fairly firm, so it's quite easy to do the fine brush work with it.
We don't have a good quality gold paint, so Heinrich is using a Sakura gold jelly roll pen to add to the chains. Very easy to use on the paper, providing of course that your paper is dry, your paint is dry, and you can just add the chains and some more definition to the chains with this beautiful jelly roll pen. Add a little bit of glitter and shine to the stars. And now we can remove the tape. Do it gently, remove it at a 45 degree angle so as not to tear your paper underneath. If it's stuck, just blow on it with a hairdryer on a warm setting, not hot, just a warm setting to loosen up the glue. And there you have a beautiful border around your painting. It is always a good idea to have a look at your painting again the next day when it's properly dried. Heinrich found that he didn't like the way that the balls just hung there in the air, so he added a little bit more chain to it to anchor it to the top. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us on our watercolor journey. We hope to see you again very soon.